Are you curious about the differences and similarities between the iconic space shuttle and the upcoming Dream Chaser space plane? What makes Dream Chaser stand out, and how does it compare to the space shuttle in terms of its payload capacity, landing process, and launch methods? How does Dream Chaser's heat shield differ from the shuttles? Hey there folks, welcome to our channel. Here we explore the latest trends and developments in the tech industry, from cutting-edge technology to the latest science discoveries. In this video, we will talk about the similarities and differences of Dream Chaser and Space Shuttle. But before we move forward, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel and tap the notification bell so you won't miss any of our uploads. The Differences The Space Shuttle was highly effective because of its large size, particularly its payload bay. When fully assembled, it stood 184 feet tall and weighed 4.5 million pounds. The bay, which measured 15 feet in diameter and 60 feet in length, was able to accommodate sizable payloads such as entire telescopes or station segments. However, the Dream Chaser is not built for the same high payload capacity as the shuttle. Measuring only 30 feet in length, the Dream Chaser is much smaller, and its payload capacity is partially configurable to suit each mission. It can transport up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, such as food, water, supplies, and science experiments. The Dream Chaser's primary function is consistent crew travel and payload delivery, and it is not designed for large payload missions. Initially designed as a crew space plane under NASA's commercial crew program, the Dream Chaser has the capacity to carry up to seven astronauts to and from the space station and other low-Earth orbit destinations. This is similar to the Space Shuttle, which carried between two and eight astronauts on each mission. Sierra Space, the creator of the Dream Chaser, is currently working on an uncrewed mission to the ISS. If this is successful, it will pave the way for crewed Dream Chaser launches in the future. Recently, it was announced that the Dream Chaser space plane would be available in at least three different designs, each tailored to specific mission profiles and goals. Instead of trying to make one spacecraft that could do everything, Zero Space made the decision to separate the Dream Chaser into multiple designs, each one able to excel at its respective task. This resulted in the creation of Dream Chaser 100, DC 200, and DC 300. The uncrewed DC 100 is currently being developed and is set to launch soon. The crewed DC-200 features additional engines at the back for abort capability and other modifications. Finally, the DC-300 is intended for missions not only to LEO, but also MIO and GTO. Another critical difference between the Dream Chaser and the Space Shuttle lies in the application and material of the heat shield. The Space Shuttle struggled with its heat shield design in the past, often causing delays due to damaged tiles that needed replacing. The Thermal Protection System (TPS) was comprised of various protection types, not just silica tiles. They could be categorized into two basic types, tile TPS and non-tile TPS. The primary selection criteria were the lightest weight protection that could handle the heat in a given area, although in some cases, a heavier type was used if additional impact resistance was needed. Much of the space shuttle was covered in Li-900 silica tiles made from highly pure quartz sand. The insulation helped to prevent heat transfer to the underlying orbiter aluminum skin and structure. On the other hand, Sierra Space has claimed that its engineers have been able to update the TPS tiles from what was used during NASA's shuttle program, with more innovation, better technology, and lessons learned. They utilize modern manufacturing techniques to increase strength and decrease cost. An additional variation between the tiles used in the Dream Chaser and those used in the Space Shuttle is their size. Dream Chaser tiles are roughly 10 inches by 10 inches, whereas Space Shuttle tiles measured 6 inches by 6 inches. Furthermore, Dream Chaser tiles are stronger and lighter than their shuttle counterparts. They also meet all requirements regarding micrometeoroid orbital debris to ensure secure entry, descent, and landing of both crewed and cargo missions. These modifications, among others, were designed to make the tiles more dependable and simpler to refurbish. The Similarities Despite the numerous differences between the Dream Chaser and the Space Shuttle, there are still several critical similarities between them, particularly in their landing method. Both spacecraft are capable of making runway landings, and the approach and landing phase of the process starts at an altitude of 3,000 meters, or 10,000 feet, while traveling at 150 meters per second. The orbiter follows a negative 20-degree or negative 18-degree kaleidoscope 
and descends at roughly 51 meters per second, or 167 feet per second. The speed brake is used to maintain a consistent speed, and a pre-flare maneuver is initiated by the crew to a negative 1.5 degree glide scope at an altitude of 610 meters or 2,000 feet. The landing gear is deployed 10 seconds before touchdown when the orbiter is at an altitude of 91 meters and traveling at 150 meters per second. A final flare maneuver is performed to reduce the orbiter's descent rate to 0.9 meters per second, and touchdown occurs at a speed of 100 to 150 meters per second, depending on the weight of the spacecraft. After the landing gear touchdown, the crew deploys a drag chute out of the vehicle stabilizer and begins wheel braking when the orbiter is traveling slower than 72 meters per second. Once the orbiter's wheels have stopped, the crew deactivates the flight components and prepares to exit. During regular missions, the forces experienced by the spacecraft as it accelerates through the atmosphere are only 1.7 Gs. Zero Space is confident that the Dream Chaser can return critical cargo at less than 1.5 Gs using the same runway landing method. To validate this, there have been several drop tests of the Dream Chaser. For example, in one instance, as the helicopter made its second attempt at the launch zone, all systems were green, and the Dream Chaser began its test flight. The spacecraft entered a steep 70-degree dive, quickly gaining airspeed to intercept the flight path for its normal Earth return. The Dream Chaser then performed a series of aerodynamic test inputs, designed to produce actual data to validate control system parameters. Finally, the spacecraft deployed its landing gear, flared, and touched down on the Edwards runway. This landing will not only provide the opportunity for reuse, but it also aims to expedite the process of reviewing the spacecraft and preparing it for the next mission. Not only do the Dream Chaser and Space Shuttle share similarities in their landing methods, but they also have similarities in their launch processes. In the case of the Space Shuttle, between T-6.6 seconds and T-3 seconds, while the RS-25 engines were firing but the SRBs were still bolted to the pad, the offset the rest would cause the Space Shuttle to pitch down 650 millimeters or 25.5 inches. The three-second delay allowed the stack to return to nearly vertical before SRB ignition. At T-0, the eight frangible nuts holding the SRBs to the pad were detonated, the final umbilicals were disconnected, the SSMEs were commanded to 100% throttle, and the SRBs were ignited. By T plus point 23 seconds, the SRBs had built up enough thrust for liftoff to commence and reach maximum chamber pressure by T plus point 6 seconds. In the case of Dream Chaser, the spacecraft does not provide any thrust and requires a dedicated rocket to get it into orbit. Dream Chaser by itself would not get very far at all. However, once in space, it can maneuver accordingly. The unique aspect of Dream Chaser is that it can fly on any suitable launch vehicle, a rocket that can fit the spacecraft inside the pharynx. At its core, Dream Chaser is a multi-mission vehicle, capable of supporting a variety of LEO needs. It can be customized for both domestic and international customers through vehicle configuration, launch site, destination, landing site, duration, and other variables. Sierra Space has already entered into agreements with multiple international space agencies, and they are developing technologies, applications, and missions for Dream Chaser-based space systems. Recently, the first launch of Dream Chaser Tenacity was delayed from the summer of 2023 to no earlier than December 2023. NASA updated its internal schedule to show that Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will now berth at the International Space Station late this year. While the delay is not ideal, it is the first launch and is bound to experience some delay. Hopefully, in the coming months, the company will provide more updates and prepare for final testing and preparation. Sierra Space aims to revamp what a space plane is capable of and what it is meant to do. Dream Chaser shares many similarities and differences with the Space Shuttle all of which are intended to achieve the future goal of the spacecraft. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and what impact it has on the space industry. What do you think about Dream Chaser's unique approach to spaceflight and its potential impact on the space industry? Do you think Dream Chaser will be able to live up to its promises or will it face unforeseen challenges? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest content. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video.